Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to look at everybody's favorite thing, composite surface area. And what composite surface area, composite means a combination. When you take composites, things are composites. If you take a composite test, you're, you're looking at different disciplines and different subject areas. Composite means kind of an aggregate. It's everything together. So when we look at composite surface area, we want to look at the exposed surfaces. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at this one. Okay, you have to determine what shapes you're dealing with here. And in this particular composite shape, it's a composite shape, I'm dealing with a cone and I'm dealing with a cylinder. So I've got a cone and a cylinder. So I have to decide how much of the total surface area is showing. So let's look at the cone. If I were to take wrapping paper, and I would wrap this up as a present, which would be an interesting looking present to give somebody. If I were to wrap this up with wrapping paper, would I have to wrap that circle? No. That circle is not visible. I have it there to show you the shape, but you can't see that circle. This, the composite surface area is what is visible. So for the cone, we're actually going to do the lateral area of the cone. So the cone will have lateral area. So we'll look at the lateral area of the cone all the way around. And remember that for a cone, the lateral area is pi times radius times slant height. Pi times radius times slant height. Now I'm going to give you the slant height. I forgot to put that in there. That's four inches. Remember the slant height is here, the real height straight up and down. So I've got lateral area equals pi times radius, which is 3, times slant height, which is 4. And that's going to give me 12 pi. So 12 pi is the lateral area of my cone. That's all that's showing. No base. No base is showing. I just want lateral. Now let's look at the cylinder. The cylinder, you've got multiple things showing. You have the lateral portion of the cylinder showing and one of the bases. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either find the entire surface area for the cylinder and subtract the base that you can't see, or you can do the lateral area of the cylinder and add the base you can see. I'm going to add the base. So let's do the lateral area first. Let's do the sides of the cylinder. So the lateral area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h. So my lateral area is 2 times pi times radius, which is 3, times height, which is 6. And that's going to be 3 times 6 is 18 times 2 is 36, so 36 pi. But what else do I have besides that lateral surface that's showing? I've got a base down here. This base up here doesn't show, but this one does. So what's the formula? I need to find the area of that one base. What's the formula for the area of a, of a circle? Pi r squared. So I have pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi. So now I'm going to look at my complete area. And what I have here is I have 12 pi for the cone, 36 pi for the lateral for the cylinder, and then 9 pi for the cylinder the base of the cylinder that's showing. So I've got 12 pi plus, this is going to be the total surface area, 12 pi plus 36 pi plus 9 pi. And that'll give me 48 pi plus 9, which would be 57 pi. And that's inches squared. And if you were to multiply that out, you have 179. 0.07 inches squared. So that is the complete composite area that's showing. This circle's not showing, so we didn't consider the circle on the cone. We also didn't consider the circle here. All right, so let's look at the next one. Now we have another combination of two figures. The two figures that we have here, let me put a little line under there so we can separate. The two figures that we have here is I've got a pyramid and I have a prism. I have a rectangular prism. So let's do, let's look at the pyramid. Well, first of all, the pyramid, can you see the base of the pyramid? No. 
So I'm going to do the lateral area of the pyramid. So lateral area of the pyramid. The formula for the lateral area of a pyramid is one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. So the lateral area of my pyramid is going to be one half and the perimeter of my base is going to be 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5 because that's 3 and that's 5. So 10, so 16. The slanted height is 4. So my lateral area for my pyramid is going to be 4 times 16 which is 64 divided by 2 which is 32. Now let's look at the rectangular prism. The rectangular prism, remember the formula for the lateral area of a prism is pH. No basis. So I'm just going to do the lateral area. Now why am I doing the lateral area of the prism? Well, one of the bases is not showing. So what I'm going to do is find the lateral area first and then add the bottom base. You could also find the total and subtract the top base. It's however you want to do it. So the perimeter here of my base is 16. And my height is 8. So the lateral area there is 16 times 8, which is 128. So to find my total composite surface area that's showing, I'm going to take the 32 from the pyramid plus the 128 from the rectangular prism. But I'm still missing something, though. I've got one, one more thing. I have another base. I have a base showing. So I need to do the area of that base. It's a rectangle. It's a 3 by 5, which is what? Oops. 15. So not only do I have to add those two together, now I've got to add, I'm going to add the 32, the 128, and the 15 for the base. So I've got 32, excuse me, plus 128, plus 15, and that gives you 175. So it's 175 square millimeters. And that is your composite surface area for